Hello and welcome back to Revender and Sports and a sunny January 29th of 2024 day. It's about 76 or 78 degrees today in, uh, in San Diego. But we are here to talk about this bike. Now, this is a, an, an in-progress build check it's in the title so this is not the final build but this is uh, what I've got so far and um, I bought this frame last year there's there's a video on the channel about it when I did the unboxing this is the 50th anniversary Outback and it's got uh, you know some coloring and some uh, graphics on there to signify it as a 50th anniversary now the first thing I'd like to cover is the sizing of it I was a little undecided as to whether I was going to get uh, a medium or a large um, the large I'm 5'9 and it says for fitting guidelines the 5'9 is um, on one end of the spectrum and then I think it's like 6'1 or something like that. I generally don't pay too much attention to those sizing recommendations. So what I did is I looked at the stack and reach. And I ride a 55 Road Logic. And this is pretty close to what that 55 is like on the Road Logic. This is a large. And I mainly paid attention to the reach. The stack, sure, the stack's going to grow on this bike compared to uh, the Road Logic 55, but the reach was only, uh, you know, so it was 390 for my Road Logic, and this one's 395. So 0 0.5 uh, of a centimeter. So I. I went with the reach more than worrying so much about the stack so it is a much taller bike and in general it's a taller bike now I know some of you will be like oh look those valve stems are not at 6 o'clock well I wanted them at 12 o'clock because that way you can read the label on the on the tire so anyway uh, but these are Renee Hurst Hatcher Pass they're 48 millimeter tires and and that is what's supposed to be the spec for a 700 wheel size so I wanted to check it what what does it look like with a 48 millimeter tire for clearance so that's the chain um, seat stay and then down here we've got good room on the seats I'm sorry on the chain stays all right so and then the fork We'll shoot it from the back and then we'll shoot it from the front and uh, you know let me know in the comments section if you like the new um, setup for where I set up the bike typically I put it out in front of my front door but um, I just thought why not I used to do a lot of photo shoots with bikes out here and uh, for new bike builds but I got away from it don't know why right so this is a 48 tire so it makes the bike much taller if you set it next to your road logic with you know 28 tires or 30 tires uh, there's some discussion as to whether it'll take 32s I'm pretty sure it'll take 32s on a 25 wide rim so the first thing I'd like to also, or not first thing since we already covered that as a size, but the next thing I'd like to cover is group set choice. I like Shimano. I've never been really a fan of SRAM, but, um, and, I, and I don't like one by. So this has a two by. And those that have been watching the channel for a while, they know I went through the, the component spec on a separate video. So if you need... To dig down into the details that's where to look and since this is an, an in-progress build I'm not quite sure what seat posts I'm going to end up with some folks have been talking about the ergon 
with the uh, split post. Uh, there's also the EE silk post that has some um, travel on the top. Um, so it'll probably have, you know, the, the inserts up to here and then the rest would be seat post. So about that much. And uh, so I haven't decided on the seat posts yet. This is pretty much a parts bin special. And uh, it just, these wheels I just had sitting around, they are head uh, disc wheels, obviously. And then uh, the saddle I've had sitting, sitting around, that's why the, the rails are already, uh, it's actually one of my demo saddles that I always lend out for people here in the store. And then that seat post is a parts bin. It just a seat post that's been sitting around. So I have to decide on what type of seat post I'm going to ride. And with the 30 with the 48 tires, who knows? I mean, I probably don't need a um, a very compliant seat post. The stem is a most stem. It comes off of uh, my Pinarello tandem I had most components on it. So that stem is going to go at some point once I figure out my fit. I'll get something nice to uh, put it put on there. It's a 110 stem. I typically ride 120 on my Road Logic. So 120 on my Road Logic. This is a 110. And if you recall earlier in the video, I talked about how this bike is 0.5 of a centimeter longer. So who knows, maybe the 110 stem is what I need instead of a 120. And then I've got these um, SQ Lab bars that I've just also had sitting around. They were on another bike. I did a demo on them for a few months. And there were some things I didn't like about it, but I think for riding gravel, I think this bar is, is more suitable for that application as opposed to when I was riding it on the road. And I need to figure out whether uh, I'm gonna stick with this bar width or if I'm going to get a different bar width. Uh, I'm not really enthused about the, the bars with the flare. That's just never been appealing to me. I think they look ridiculous. But, um, you know, who knows, maybe uh, function is more important than form on this one. So what we need to do is just ride. I mean, I've been riding my road bikes on gravel for a long time. So um, I know how, my, how to handle a bike. Uh, so I don't know. I, I just don't understand the flaring. But, you know, it's popular. So maybe someday. Now, um couple of things to cover as well this bike is not really for riding gravel it's not why I built this bike up there is a, an, an epic climb that I want to do with this bike that I've already done on my Ritchie cycle cross bike but I want to do it on something with bigger tires so when I rode it on my cycle cross bike the Canty Swiss cross I had 35 tires on there and it's not recommended. The, the climb is called uh, White Mountain Peak and it takes you up to 14,252 feet. But it is absolutely a hardtail minimum, if not full suspension, mountain bike trail. But I want to do it, since I already did it on a cyclocross bike, I want to do it on this bike because I'm never really going to buy a mountain bike. It's just mountain biking is just not my thing. And I think this bike is more versatile. Um, so that's why I'm building this bike or why I built this bike. I'm still in the process of building it. And uh, so one other thing, uh, there are, there's some chatter out there about, oh my God, those chain stays are so long and uh you know i've had people that have not purchased the outback because somewhere somebody made such a big deal about these chain stays being 453 millimeters long or 450 millimeters long 
I've been riding it around the block. I've done a couple of little uh, kickers in this area. I don't feel the difference. I don't, I mean, I just don't feel any different. The bike feels stable, and that's what you want uh, on uneven terrain. Uh, so, you know, Richie, Tom Richie had an idea. He's probably wanted the chain stays longer for more stability. But, uh, you know, this is not a bike you're going to be, I mean, you probably could ride it on a group ride, but it's not that kind of a bike. And um, you want to load it down. It's got eyelets all over, so you can put fender mounts on it. It has fender mounts, so you can put fenders on here. You can put a rack on here, you know, so you have, you have your, you can see the, the mounts here. You can see the mount here. And then right down there you can see the mount for the uh, fender and then of course on the fork you've got it right there so you could put you know you put fenders on this thing you put racks on this thing you've got that adventure fork so you could put extra either bottle cages or if you wanted to put you know equipment um, you know sleeping bags I guess uh, tents or whatever can go on on there so there's a lot of other versatility to this bike that a mountain bike doesn't have and I'm just I'm just never really gonna be into mountain biking so this is why I've got this bike built up and as far as mechanical things there's just one thing that's keeping me from actually taking it out and riding it um, in full uh, riding mode and that's uh, the bolts that were supplied with the GRX caliper. They're too long. And so I've got a set of bolts in there just holding it in place just so I could, you know, so I could cut the line and bleed the brakes and just get the bike built up. But I've got some bolts that are the correct size on order. Um, if anyone's building one of these, you're going to need bolts that are for a 10 millimeter thickness and that's how you uh, spec out what bolts you're going to use so this is not a, a carbon frame with a lot of built-up material here and so the bolts that were supplied were so long and when you try to bolt them into into the caliper itself it it bottoms out before it it's got good purchase against the mount so the bolts that were supplied are too long and now I've got uh, some shorter bolts on order. Once I get that sorted out, I mean, you could just see there's just no, no threads coming through the mount itself. So um, that's, that's just on there, just so I could, as I mentioned, cut the line, correct size, bleed the brakes, and just give it a quick test ride. I'm sorry if I'm blocking the bike with uh, the sun. But that's it. Uh, I'm, <laughs> There's other talk about, oh, gravel saddles and black. I don't know. I never understood all this gravel marketing. I guess it just sells product. But, you know, your ass doesn't change. You're, you still have the same ass whether you're riding a road bike, a mountain bike, a gravel bike. So that's my road saddle. That's where I'll ride. And uh, I don't buy gravel-specific saddles or gravel-specific anything. It's, it's, a, it's a bike. To, it's a road bike with fat tires. That's all it is for me. All right. That is all for today. This is just an in-progress build. Uh, you can see there's just road pedals on there just because I needed to get out on the, on the, to test ride it. And uh, um, I don't know if I'll ride SPDs on here or maybe my road pedals. I don't know. Uh, being in San Diego... You have to ride a lot of road to connect to another gravel road, to, to another dirt road. We don't have gravel here. We just have dirt, dirt and rocks, sand, dirt, rocks, and sand. We don't have gravel here, but that's what it's called. So I may have to, um, or I almost always just ride my road uh, shoes and road pedals. I've got a pair of pretty beat up road shoes, <laughs> these Garnet uh, Stilos that used to be $500 when they were new, but they're all beat up now and they're just my gravel shoes. All right, that is all for today. 
there's going to be a finishing video and then probably some videos of um, of the climb that I want to do with this so it's a 10,000 foot climb and it's paved for the first 21 miles and then it goes dirt like absolute ridiculous rock and dirt stuff so that's why I built this bike okay if you'd like to hear more about that White Mountain Peak uh, a video about it then make a comment down below if you have an Outback make a comment down below if you uh, want to see the finishing video make a comment down below in the meantime please like and subscribe and we'll see you up the road